Hi, Sandy. I am just checking the computer to make sure that I can find the live. Brenda, Tony, Vesta. Okay, I think I found me, so now I'll just flip the camera around. Hi, Donna. Okay, and then one more little touch up here. There we go. Get the glare from the window out. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Oh, hi, Josephine. There were 23 cards. Well, actually, there was more than 23 cards, but 23 sh um, of you beautiful paper artists shared your designs from last week's uh, live. And I am so glad that there's an app that I can put your names on a wheel and spin it because I would have picked everybody to be the, um, the banner picture for our group. It was so hard. I wouldn't want to be the one that had to choose just one because they were all so pretty. Um, but congratulations to Pat Forer, who um, the wheels spun her name. Um, so 23, that made me so happy that 23 people were inspired to, to make last week's demo. So that made me very happy. Hi, Tammy. Let me see. Um, hi, Lori. Again, I cannot... Uh, I wonder if I touch the screen again, I get, okay, there I can get comments now. Hi, Debbie. Um, so now it's easier for me to see on my phone who's here. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Sharon. And Susan. It's so good to see everybody here. The sun is shining today. We had rain most of yesterday. So, um... What do I want to kind of touch on? When I flip the camera around, I'm going to show you the cover of the new catalog, uh, which will go live May 3rd. If you've ordered from me in the last six months, you are going to get a catalog. I really do appreciate those who have reached out to me and told me that, um, you know, they do their like shopping online and stuff so that they could pass their catalog on to someone else. So thank you for letting me know that. Hi, Mary. Um, but if you have ordered, you will get one. Hi, Leah. And um, if you don't have a demonstrator and you would like a copy of the, the new catalog, if you would just message me your address, then I can send you one. <clears throat> um, let's see. I'm still on a, I had so much fun with last week's design that I kept with it again this week, using up those scraps. So I hope that you're going to like this. I call it like the spinning strippy uh, quilt card because when you lay your pieces down, you get that whirly bird type of design. So it kind of made me think of it spinning. And, um, hi, Lisa. And hi, Mary. Um, so I thought that it would be a fun continuation to use up. Maybe if you had some strips left over from last week's class that we can just keep going with it for now. So, um, I know I should probably make notes, you know, like, what I'd want to go over, but w when we start, but uh, I am so bad about that. So as things pop into my head, we'll go over them, but I'm going to go ahead and, and flip the camera around so that we can get started. Hi, Pauline. So, oh. okay.
I try to do this slowly so that nobody... Okay, I'm going to have to move that back a little bit so that I don't make anybody... Um... Hi, Cindy! Dizzy or anything. I think that looks pretty good. Get a little bit of a shadow, but... I think it gets better if I just bring that into the light a little bit more. Okay, that's good. That's good. Everything looks good. Okay, so this is the cover of the new catalog. I'm not allowed to show you the inside yet. So this is the cover. Covers are always so pretty. I can tell you already that this paper, this stamp set is going to be in my collection um, so I, I placed one pre-order and got all the new in colors and, um, I want to put in another pre-order because I want to get the songbird bundle. If you haven't seen any other demonstrators on YouTube yet using it, go check it out because it is the cutest little bird. The bundle comes with a punch and it. You can't be the chirpy card maker without having this this bundle. So I got to get that. And then again, I really, really loved um, this stamp set and dies and the paper and everything. So <clears throat> that is going to be on my wish list that I'm going to make sure gets put into my hands <laughs> by the time the, the catalog goes live. So what I'm focusing on for today's card is the In Symmetry Bundle. It is my favorite. I love this paper. I love the stamps, the colors, everything about it I just love. I did get an extra paper pack um, because it is discontinuing, and I love the paper so much. Um, I'm really going to hate to see this one go, but I am still going to use it in my quilt cards because the punch makes the cutest little leaves that are great for to um, if you want to replicate applique um, quilts the the leaves and stuff are perfect the these little leaves right here are perfect for the appearance of applique on your quilt cards so it's not going away for me. Um, I know as a demo, we <clears throat> want to demonstrate current product. But, you know, sometimes you just got to mix the old with the new and keep your favorites around. So, this is <clears throat> the gems are um, these little faceted squares. I want to use up some of those because these are the retiring in colors and then the DSP my favorite my favorite paper out of the DSP is this one but you get six sides of the designer series paper have these beautiful florals So this is my first favorite. This is my second favorite. I love the boldness of the Knight of Navy. <clears throat> but when you turn them over, look at these gorgeous colors. <clears throat> if anything, I want to keep these colors in my paper collection for when I need a Calypso Coral. Um, the color that coordinates is Bumblebee. But you could easily mix, I mean, this could be so saffron, it could be daffodil delight. But these are just beautiful colors to have in your stash for your quilt cards when you're wanting to bring in a solid, meaning you see just like one color instead of a print where you see many colors. So those are the papers that are part of um, that collection. And then this is the stamp set, and I am going to be using Hey Friend as my sentiment 
and then I'll be stamping the inside with a little flower. And then I'm uh, going to kind of make this card, but here you'll notice that I used uh, quarter inch strips all the way through. I'm going to do a, um, a mix of half inch strips, half inch scraps, quarter inch, just rotating half inch, quarter inch, half inch, just because I'd like to see what this looks like kind of with this design. Okay. So we'll be using that stamp set. We got the gems. And so let me show you some of the other um, cards that I did. This is the tulip um, stamp set. I just love it. Thought if I'm using the the tulips in this designer series paper from the mini catalog right now that I wanted to use um, that stamp set to pop up the center of my spinning um, strips here. And then I used the, the leaves for down here and then I used the little white dot embellishments that's, um, they're gonna be carried over into the new catalog. And then I stamped my sentiment over on this side. It's a little wonky, so forgive me on that. But instead of putting that over here, I put it on this side, stamped a tulip, and of course, to give you a really great amount of designer series paper, put a large piece on the back. This is the Home and Heart, um, or Home Blessings, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but this is done in um, the collection of designer, designer series paper from um, that collection in the mini catalog. And then use the dies here for the leaves and some uh, fresh freesia in color jewels, the denim ribbon, and then stamped this on the inside. And I really got to show how beautiful this bee designer series paper is on the back. And then I didn't have any tropical stamp sets, so I used the designer series paper and made that my focal point on the center here and then used some frawny, uh, ferny looking die cuts for the leaves. And I did this with the book binding fold so today's card will work really well. It'll work perfect for the book binding fold if that's what you want to use when you do your card. And then this beautiful tropical paper on the back. And then this is the pansy. What I will say that I noticed when I used a lot of patterns um, next to each other instead of like doing a pattern, flip the paper over and get more of a solid. I've lost kind of the spinning effect. I still love that it's scrappy, but I kind of lost being able to see the spin, but I still love this card. And then stamped the pansy in the center. I fussy cutted some leaves out of the designer series paper and that's an example showing a different designer series paper. So those are just some extra samples that I wanted to show you. Um, by the way, if you're new, my name's Julie Heights and I am the Trippy Card Maker of Quilts and More. Welcome to this Thursday morning live. And this is the April host code. If you see anything that I demonstrate that you would like to order and you don't have a demonstrator, if you choose me as your demonstrator, if you would use that host code, I would appreciate it. Oh, that's something I wanted to say. Oh. So the box I got yesterday or the day before, it was quite heavy. And so when my husband brought it in, he goes, this, this box is kind of heavy. I was like, oh, those are my catalogs. Just sit, sit the box over there. And I opened the box and it's not the catalogs. I haven't got my catalogs yet. 
it was the cardstock that I ordered because um, I got it before the shipping increased. And it was all my cardstock. But it was a lot of all the cardstock I needed to make April's Block of the Month card kit. It was cardstock that I was low on. So I don't have my catalogs yet. I just assumed because of the weight and the shape of the box, it was catalogs, but it was cardstock. So um, I'm also waiting on my order to fulfill the thank you, little thank you gifts for your orders that were placed in the month of March. So I'm waiting on that order so I can get those sent out. So those are a couple updates I wanted to give you. So let's get started. And we're going to get started making our quilt block. Because then while that is drying, um, we'll do a little bit of stamping, go back to it, trim it up, and put our card together. So this is a four inch square four patch. And um, I need a one and a half inch square of basic white. And what we're going to do is we are going to glue this on point to the center of our four patch. It may be off just a little bit, but um, it's going to work. And I'm actually going to cover this square up with a popped up um, focal point. But this square here will, um, if you turn the card sideways, you can see that this is filled in and it gives me the base that I need to lay down the strips around it. So let's go ahead and get this down. Oh, good. I'm in camera pretty good. We're just going to get those points on these lines, the horizontal and vertical lines, the best we can. It may not be perfect. Our strips are gonna butt up nicely to this square and give us a good foundation to start our strip quilt. And now I'm gonna bring in my strips. Now, if you're going totally scrappy, you don't need four of each of your strips to go, or to go around and, and spin your design. But I am going to, I wanna see the definition of that, of the spin. So what I think I'm going to do and what would give it a really good definition is to use a darker color, a bolder color around so that um, it really sets the spin. Let me show you what I mean by that. If we bring this card, for example, I started with the wider piece and a bold piece, and it really set the spin of, of the, um, the strips, okay? So that's what I mean by that. So what you're going to do is you're going to take those four pieces, and I'm just going to show you how this lays out. And then we'll start gluing it down. So this would go around here, and then somewhere I have one more. I got all of these pieces mixed up when I was bringing them. Here it is. And then this would go like that. And these strips, I didn't cut down to three inches, so they're a little long and hanging out there, but they'll get trimmed off. But if you have at least three inches in length, it'll still come off of your grid, and um, but you won't have quite as much waste if that's what you want to call it my longer pieces i can use for another card so this is the gist of getting our spin so what i am going to do is i'm just gonna pat 
paint a zigzag here. And I am going to butt this strip right up to my white square. I want a nice straight line across the top. And then I'm just going to turn it so that it's easier to work with. And then I am going to, again, put my zigzag. I love trying to find quilting or sewing verbiage <laughs> and mix it in with our paper. It may be a little quirky, but I think it's fun. And we just want to butt those seams up together, lay that down and keep going. The fun starts when you are trying to come up with a pattern or placement of all the other colors that's pleasing to your eye. I like to just, whatever strip I used first, I'm just looking for a paper or a color um, that has contrast. And right here, I can see that I didn't get that all the way up there. I can still push it. Okay. You really won't see it because we're going to cover all that center up. Okay, so there you've got your, you've got your spin there. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the strips that you add are going the long way, the same way that your, um, your first strip is going. I don't want to go this way when my, my strip is going this way. So now comes the fun part. I want to come in with, I kind of know in my head, what colors I wanted to focus on. So what I'm going to do is next to this Knight of Navy, I'm going to come in with that print. And then again, I want to come in with a wider strip. And I'm kind of limited because what my goal was is not to cut more paper. Um, in order to make the second card. My challenge to myself is to use up what I've already got left. That, I think I'm going to go with the yellow for some contrast. And then I am going to bring in, because I want to get some green in there. So by bringing in this piece, I don't know if I've got a big just jade though. Okay, so I don't, but that's okay. Cause you know what I can do? I can bring in the Calypso Coral here. And then that can be um, my color. Nope, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go with this and see how it turns out, okay? Now, if you're using all quarter-inch strips, then you are going to have more strips to glue down. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get these out of my way in order. And I am going to... I'm just going to make a wide zigzag here. I'm just going to go ahead and do each one of my quarter panels here all at the same time. I'm lay that down. That one. That one and Go ahead and put 
that one. Now, when you get to this outside corner, there's a lot of paper showing. So if you want to just tear this in half, then you can use this one for your other corner. Just make sure that you're getting good coverage with your glue so that all your pieces lay down. And gotta find my strips since I've got them all mixed up now. And I've got two different uh, yellows here, so I need to be careful. You'll feel them just butt up to each other really nice and just kind of like snap into place. And I need, here it is. That one and then this little piece that I tore off. I want to make sure I got glue all, whoops, get glue all the way out to the corner. So I'm just going to put a little bit more down there. And I'm using my silicone um, sheet underneath in case glue happens to sneak out. Just get that wide zigzag there and then make sure our corners have glue on there so we don't lose any strips and now i gotta find my little pink hmm, what is the opposite side of that oh i'm looking for a thin here we go sometimes it's easier to find your paper when you've got all of this going on on the side like I do is to um, see what color is on the opposite side and uh, see what paper is there and then go from there. Where's my other yellow? There it is. So this is fun when you're just playing with Putting the pieces down, it is just like putting a puzzle together. And then I'm going to find that wide piece of the Calypso Coral. And I'm just going to go ahead and rip it in half and cover now, in my cutting, I can tell by this little bit of grid paper here that um, I might have cut a scant quarter inch or a scant half inch. Don't be afraid to um, make your strips a little wider than what you want with this design because um, at least it'll go off the edge of your paper without having to add another piece. When I trim this up, I think I'm just going to um, trim it up to maybe just just a sh just shy under four inches square so I can get those little corners off of there. Um, okay, so I need my pink. And then I need that pretty yellow. And I need this. And my last corner. So there you've got all your piecing done. We're gonna let this dry a little bit and then we're just gonna flip it over when we go to cut and just follow the outline of our four inch uh, grid paper. I'm gonna 
cut mine down just a little bit shorter than that so I can get rid of my little corners. Um, when I cut off the paper, it might take care of the problem for me, but we'll see. But we're going to set this aside just to let this dry. Okay. So now what we can do is I'm going to do a little bit of stamping. Uh, I'm going to stamp in. I want my flirty flamingo um, to pop out. I'm hoping this comes together. Sometimes you just wait and see once you um, get your pieces down. Like what color is really speaking to me? Uh, I'm going to go. I tried to plan this ahead of time so I don't take too much of your day. But we'll go ahead and I'm going to stamp. Hey friend. And then I also want, this is the white square that's going to pop up on top. And when whatever your focal point is, make sure that you're doing it on point. The first time I did my tulip, I did it like this and then it, it, it didn't work. So remember, you want to stamp on point. And... I am going to, I made a mask here with my flower because I want to put some leaves beside it. Um, my original card I just thought was a little too plain. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring this closer to me so that I can try and judge if this is in the center. And if it's not, oh well. Don't you just love all the little feathered little lines? I think this is why I love this set so much. Now, if your ink pad is really got a lot of ink on it, you're going to want to move that ink away um, with a spoon because you, if you get too much ink, you lose all these little feathered lines. But that happens if you've got too much ink on your ink pad. So now that we've done that... Let's do one more flower for the inside of our card, and then I can put Flirty Flamingo away. And you know what? I'm going to put it on this side this time. And because it's a photopolymer set and it doesn't have a lot of cushion like red rubber does, I've got my piercing mat underneath so it helps give me um, a better image. So we're going to put Flirty Flamingo away. And now let's, I'm going to bring in just Jade for my stem and for my leaves. And I might have to do this twice. No, nope, it should. It's going to just hit the bottom of my card. So there's the stem, and then I'm bringing back in this piece, and I'm going to put my mask on here, because when I'm, I'm going to put a leaf, oh, better make sure that it's on point, um, I'm going to kind of bring my leaves out. And I'm sorry if my head gets in the camera here. And then I think the other leaf goes the other way. It does. So then I'm just going to make sure that my mask goes like that. Hold it. And then when I take my mask away, you can see that um, it looks like the leaves are underneath the flower. That was like a last minute decision that I wanted to do. Um, and so I think I don't want to get carried away. So I think I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to stop with my focal point. 
So I can set that to the side. The other thing I need to do with the Just Jade is there are some, a double leaf here. And I'm just going to add some leaves. To my flower. So I think that is all I'm going to do there. I want to keep it simple. So I believe, oh, there's one other thing I want to do. I want to put a couple of yellow flowers right in. And I think I'm going to stamp off because I just want it faint behind. There we go. Now when I punch this out, I'm going to lose some of the, the flower, but that's okay. So I know there's a new punch that has the oval with the scallop as all in one, but I still have Stampin' Up's old whale punches, and I really don't know if they're the same size, but I'm going to use them anyway, and I am just going to try to find my center here. i got to kind of put it in front of me. I'm going to punch that out. And now what I want to do is, since I have my punches out, I had you cut a four and an eighth inch square. This is actually going to be the layer behind our quilt block. But while I got my punches out, I want to get my um, scalloped edge from here. And I also want to get my um, button scallop for the back of my uh, card in the same color. So we're just gonna utilize our card stock here to get the most out of it that we can. and. Since this is going to be covered up, as long as I come in far enough, I can get whatever I need punched out of the center. And then I've got my other pieces and our punching is done. Our stamping is done. I closed all of my, okay, closed all of my um, lids to my ink. The only other thing I want to punch out is this is the punch that comes with the Insymmetry bundle. And this is those awesome leaves I was telling you about. Makes a really pretty border. But when I do this, I line up the left side of my paper with the left side of the punch. And then when you move your paper, can you see how when I moved it this way, it lined up right there? When you see that that design has filled in your negative space, you can punch again if you're doing a border and it'll be like perfect. But here's the leaves that I want. So I got some leaves. Now I can get this out of my way. Oh, I'm running out of space over here on the side of me. Okay, so let's do, let's put some things together. I am going to glue this on my... oval and then this is the button I was telling you about that I put on the back of my cards oh I got something on that one 
I think I can get that off. So there's my button. There's that. Um, let's go ahead and bring in our card base, which I'm not using the book binding fold for this one. This is just your standard A2 um, bone folder. Let's give it a good crease. And then this is the back of my card. So where was my piece of designer series paper? Did I not cut it? Well, I can hurry up and do that. I think I'm gonna bring in my favorite for the back. So I'm just gonna trim this real quick. It's gonna be four by five and a quarter. No matter how late I stay up and plan and ha try to make sure that I have everything in front of me for the live, I always, it seems like I end up forgetting something. But I could have swore last night I did this. So we're going to put this on the back. And I'll put my button on the back. And then I, I personally like a white on white inside. I think I like a little like layered look to it. I mean, um, but they're the same color. You can, you can put a four and one eight by five and three eighths inch, um, a piece of colored cardstock or designer series paper behind this and layer it for a really, just a little peekaboo border if you wanted to. So that's the inside. Now, one other thing that we needed was a, a one inch by four inch Okay, so we have that. We need the cards. Um, I think I'm going to wait and see what I wanted what paper is speaking to me. Let's just move on to cutting our quilt block off of the paper and then see what talks to me as far as what I might want that paper to be on the bottom. So I'm just going to use a horizontal line just to kind of make sure that I'm straight. This side's on four inches. And I'm just going to close the lid or the guard here. And we're just going to start trimming off all of our little pieces. And if I'm a little too big, then that's okay because I wanted to square it up a little more and get those corners off. I think this way by turning it over and cutting it, I don't know, but I'm thinking that if my blade was hitting every one of those seams, that it was easier this way, but I don't know. That could just be, could have just been a really good thought that didn't really mean anything. <laughs> 
all in an overthinker's brain. And then we'll put this on four. Make sure that line is straight. By cutting our four patch off of the grid paper, I mean, having it square to begin with, we're not trying to figure out where we, we need to cut. We just follow along the main block. And now I'm going to just, oh good, I can square this up. A little bit of that off of there. I didn't quite get all of my... But I don't think that that's really going to be that noticeable. But just to make sure. I just want to shave this a little bit. And if I shave one side, I've got to shave the other side in order to make it stay as square as possible. That's better. I can live with that. I can live with that. Okay. Move all of our pieces out. Now, the back, what we can do is we can glue. Now, if you want to emboss, this would be the time to emboss. But then we are going to glue that down to the backing. And I want to just stay on the outsides because I don't want to put glue down into the holes there. That's, for me, just um, a disaster waiting to happen because I will get into that glue somewhere along the way. And I'll move it to another place that I didn't want it. So there's our backing. And when I put, I'm just going to lay this here because I'm trying to determine what paper I want. I think I might bring in, I think I might bring in that same pink, which I had trimmed off a piece, but I don't think it was one inch. So I need a one inch by four. And do that on the side because apparently I can't find all my pieces that I could have swore I cut last night. And if I don't like that side, I can always. Nope, I'm, I'm gonna. Hmm. think I think I'm just going to go with my gut here and just go ahead and use this. Now this is kind of directional paper like Right now, I got blue flowers going one way, but my pink and yellow flowers are going the other way. So, I'm not going to fuss too much about it. But if you had a, a really distinct direction going in your paper, you're going to want to make sure that you cut the paper so that it flows in the, in the direction that you want it to. So, there are my pieces. This will sit on top. I will have the leaves on either side of here, which really seem to blend in, don't they? Well, shoot, I didn't figure that one out very well. Hmm. Hmm. I've got an outside the box idea here. I don't know if I've got any darker, like 
what if the leaves were blue? That would just give that that distinct. It was sure would make them, but not that blue. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in. Um, bring in a piece of Knight of Navy. And I am going to cut or punch out two leaves. I'm going to think outside the box that it does not have to be, it doesn't have to be green. Whoops. That one leaf isn't totally. Okay. See what they look like in blue. We're going to get a little artsy here. The blue pops more on all of the color. Put that. Now I wish my backgrounds were different, but we're going with it. I think I'll just stick with the blue accent leaves. Put that on top and we'll add some bling different color to that, okay? So while that didn't actually work out like I thought it would, we just pivot and we make, we make some changes. Okay, now before I put this down, I wanna run some ribbon around here. Um, I don't have any like light pink. Uh, hmm. Maybe just Jade. Here's one of those things where you get, sometimes you just can't pick everything out prior because you don't know what color in these strip quilts is going to speak to you more when you get to the end process. In the beginning, it might look like one thing's going to do the trick, but then in reality, um, once you cut it off, then you see that another color is speaking to you. So, well, this gives me a chance to use my Just Jade ribbon that's retiring and a color that's retiring. So I guess it's all good. It helps bring out the greens that we don't see a whole lot of. I'm going to want to keep this. To real far on this one end. Okay, and then we'll just cut that off. Let the let the tails go in whatever direction they want to go, but we just want to make sure that we have this part done before we before we glue it down to our front, leaving that small border all the way around. And we just wanna make sure that it's in the center. And then I'm just gonna go ahead I'm gonna bring this towards me here. And just try to make sure that it's pretty even. Okay. And then we can put our second piece down here at the bottom. Up. Like 
that. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the back of my leaves. Kind of spread the love here. I'm gonna keep them out here. And then we're going to pop up the sentiment, the sentiment. We're going to pop that up and we're going to pop up our um, focal image, but we do have to layer that focal image on the Knight of Navy square. While I've got my glue out, let's do that. And then when we pop, when we pop this up, it's going to set right on top like that. So let's get the glue dots out. Not glue dots, dimensionals. I have been going through dimensionals like crazy here lately. It's like everything needs to be popped up. Okay, so let's let's put that right. I don't want to press it down just yet until I'm happy with it. Okay, and then we'll put this down, and then we just got to add some bling. And what I do to what I like to do is just kind of bring this square to line it up. And you're just wanting to put it over the white. And let's see. That's not too bad. Okay, so then I just want to bring in some of these faceted gems and I want a color now I can still use the uh, magenta madness it's pink and it could be the pop that I need or I could go yellow the bumblebee which would bring out that but I don't know if it'll get lost I'm going to put a yellow, a small yellow one on point because these are square. I'm going to put that right in the center of my flower. I'm going to put one there for sure. And then I'm just going to put a larger one somewhere where there's no yellow. Right there. And let's put... <laughs> Maybe another smaller one. Hmm. Well, let's just kind of put it next to that one right there. So then there is our card. We got a little bit of bling. And again, I had... Doing it over again, I don't know if I would have changed uh, colors or paper, but I had to fly by the seat of my pants there because um, I didn't have everything um, cut like I thought I did. So we had to wing it, but I think it still turned out really pretty. And then there's the inside and the back. So this is the... The spinning strippy um, quilt 
card and again you could have gone with all half inch pieces or I mixed it up with half inch quarter half inch quarter or you could have done done all quarter um, inch wide strips let me bring back in the card that has all the quarter and let's see how different it looks oh wow totally different look huh totally different look by widening by making our strips wider oh on the computer totally different look I love it maybe I would have chosen to do my flower and my my sentiment maybe in a darker color or you know had I gone with that but shoulda coulda wouldas and um it's beautiful anyway i love it so that is the design for this week what do you think oh my gosh does that really say 35 people are watching right now you guys that is like the most ever oh my gosh i am so shocked wow and and did you notice we're two members away from having 500 in the group? That is like amazing, 500 members in this group. So we're two away. So invite um, crafters that you know who you think might like doing cards like this or they have just appreciations for quilts and they want to see what it looks like in paper form um share 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 hopefully we can get to 500 today maybe hi joan hi karen and deborah my colleen hi everybody i've been so busy looking down and creating that i i have missed names here pauline jane tony and tammy and jean Oh my goodness, so many names that I I got so engrossed in this. Della, that I didn't see how many people were hopping on. Oh wow, this is fantastic. So, I would love to see your cards posted over in the Quilt Cards and More group. And that's, that's the page that we're two members shy of 500 is the Quilt Cards and More group. So thank you for spending your Thursday with me. I hope you have gotten some inspiration. And I can't wait to see your designs. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a little flabbergasted by how many people were watching. So um, I've kind of lost it here. But um, have a very blessed day. And I really look forward to seeing what you come up with. And... Thank you for making my day. You have made my day. And, um, oh, there was one other thing that I wanted to say. I was reading the comments in last week's uh, live. And there was a comment made that just seeing the, the pictures that you share of your cards really helped brighten one of our followers day and it made me stop and think about how awesome it is that you know we don't know what our limit other people's limitations are whether it's a physical limitation or it's just time whatever that limitation looks like when you share what you love and and what you've done with others you never know whose day it's going to make it means you have made someone else's day. And I just thought that was profound to me um, with their comment. So remember, you are a light to someone every single day. You may never know it, but know that you are. So I love you all, and I will see you next Thursday.